So what is the one mutually beneficial change towns and campers could make to better accommodate each other? Uh, well, the most obvious one is for towns to provide airs for yeah. camper vans and motorhomes. Yeah. So um, somewhere to park up for the night and somewhere to get water and to your waste. Yeah, I would say remove all height barriers. Mm -hmm. um, unless there's a genuine reason for having them and not just the general reason, which I believe is in order to avoid the town being taken over by travellers. Because at the moment, anybody with a high roof is being excluded yeah. from from our favourite towns excludes and cities. And uh, I hate to see people being excluded. I, mm. It's the same thing as charging... Uh, double for a camper van mm. than what a car pays takes up exactly the same space in the car park yep. um, it's just wrong fundamentally wrong and it puts people off if you see um, some of the comments in the forums mm. people get really really annoyed at towns when they start penalizing campers then that spreads amongst the community and mm. and i think it encourages yeah. some people to avoid them yeah and they don't have to provide, well, an air would be ideal, but if they're yeah. not doing that, at least provide some parking <clears throat> spaces in the car parks that are already there, specifically for motorhomes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, some bigger yeah. spaces. And put up lots of signs saying, ideally, you would make those parking, those camping spaces free. Mm. Um, yeah, okay, charge a small fee for electricity and water if you like, mm. but put up big signs saying we're providing this to the camping community to encourage you to visit the town mm. and spend in the local the community. Town. Yeah, so then campers can help out the town by going and spending their money in the town and just not leaving any mess. So Yeah, yeah. that's all you can say, isn't it? Yeah. I've never seen any mess from a camper van in, no. a, in a town. no. Uh, it's, you know, right. so, you know, I can't think of anything else other than turn up, spend your money in the town and that's, right. that's what you're, that's how you're paying back. So next question is, how do you find park ups for the night? So we don't plan anything in advance. So we just wait until the actual day. So we know where we are when we're ready to start looking for a park up. Mm. And um, while we're driving along, I will be checking out the app Park for Night. That's um, the simplest thing to which do. Which is the simplest thing to do because you get reviews from people. Check out the reviews, people that have stayed at the places to see what they're like. I think that's the easiest thing to do when you're just starting out. Yeah. But beware, some of them can be busy. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them might well be played by boy racers, so yeah. a lot of noise at night. Yeah. yeah. Um, then the other thing you can do is check on Google Maps and we have an app called Pocket Earth mm. which um, shows all the parking spaces and you can download the maps so that if you haven't got a signal yeah. you can still look at them but yeah. just be careful with the parking spaces Yeah, all the, it shows all the parking spaces but many of them if there's a building shown next to it it could well be private so, you know, just keep that in mind if you're driving to a particular place. <clears throat> if they're out in the middle of nowhere, they invariably then are just places where people park to go dog walking and stuff yes. like that, which tend to be perfect. Downside of it is you've got no idea whether there's a height barrier. Yeah, and there's no reviews from other people that have used it, so you don't know what no. it's like. Yeah. <laughs> But after a while, you'll get to spot yourself on a map what's going to look like a good parking area. Yeah, my main point would be you, you don't have to have a, a lovely view to spend the night and sleep. We look at our park-ups as primarily oh. being somewhere just to sleep. As long as it's safe, <laughs> that's the main thing. Yeah, it's safe. Don't um, worry about a view. Yeah, safe from yobs. Yeah. Um, and safe from being struck with another vehicle. Mm. Obviously, we've got a huge advantage because our van is so small. Mm. So we're, there's not many places we couldn't park it no. if we had to. No. And have a go at stealth camping. So that's something oh, crumbs, yeah. I, I, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Just go and park <clears throat> in a supermarket car park after dark when the stores close. Provided they haven't got A&PR, as, yeah. you know, automatic number plate recognition. Yeah. Then uh, towns are great. There's so many places to park in towns, mm. um, anywhere you can park legally. 
and stay one night, arrive late, go early, jobs yeah. are good. And... Yeah. Um, question, hotel or camper van? Well, definitely prefer the camper van because of all the freedom it gives you to come and go as you please. Yeah. Um, the camper van is fun, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so the only time we use a hotel is when we're out in the camper van and we feel like we need a break. We've hurt ourselves or something like that. Yeah, or just somewhere easy <clears> where <throat> you can go and get a bath and freshen up and relax in a <clears throat> big bed. Yeah. Just for one night, just to give you a, a bit of a relief and freshen yourself up ready. If you were feeling sick, if you thought you might be sick, mm. I mean, throwing up, yeah. then we oh, would yeah. head... I would head, straight or you've got, you, you got the squits or anything yeah. like that, yeah. bang, straight into a hotel yeah. um, mm. or an Airbnb. Uh, between Airbnb and a hotel, I prefer an Airbnb because you've got nobody coming into the room disturbing you. Yeah. So if we were going to stay more than one night and um, felt like we needed a longer break, then we'd just look up an Airbnb. I would prefer we? an Airbnb. Yeah. Plus you can also do your washing there and stuff, can't you? A lot you? of them have washing machines. Yeah. yeah. What do you do about leaving your home for weeks at a time? What about your mail? We have excellent neighbours who keep an eye on the house. Yep. And make sure there's no mail hanging out the box. Yep. Our lovely neighbours get our mail in for us. Um, so it's not a problem. We would time when we go away so that it's not a time where there's things that we would have to do at home that you'd need to be at home yeah. for, like getting the cars serviced and then OT'd. Um, I like to be at home <clears throat> when I'm sorting out insurance for the cars. Yeah. Because um, we get documents sent by post, although nowadays you <clears throat> can just get it all sent electronically, so that doesn't have to be a problem. Yeah, I, w I don't think we're the best channel to ask for no. that. If you're thinking of going full time, um, look at John and Mandy's channel or uh, there's loads, isn't it? Yes. Isn't there? Yeah. The, who, people who have done it. Um, who... They've done videos advising people what to do about exactly. mail. Exactly. Yeah, so... and how to get your mail forward and stuff yeah, like that. We don't, read we don't have to do, so we don't need to don't do need that. To. So yeah. it's. Not an issue for us. And our home insurance covers us up to at least 90 days away. Yeah. And we're never away for longer than that. So no. our home insurance isn't a problem either. We yeah. can leave our home unattended for that length of time. Yeah. Our home looks occupied, doesn't it, as well? Yes. Our, our neighbours put their vehicle on our drive and yeah. stuff like that. So, um, yeah. it, you know, there's someone coming and going. It, yeah. So I don't think it would obviously be that well. we, we were away, really. No. No, we've got great neighbours. Okay. What was the first motorhome or camper van channel you watched that inspired you into changing into van life? Well, we were thinking about buying a camper van and changing from a caravan probably about three years ago. Mm. And when we had the idea, we started watching some YouTube channels yeah. to see what, what it was like. Um, the ones we started watching that I can remember were John and Mandy, Greg Virgo, yeah. The Indie Projects yeah. and The Explorers Yeah, were the main ones. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, th those are the main ones we were watching then. Um, the other one that sort of inspired me was a channel called The Explorer Buddies. Mm. I particularly liked their films. And uh, that's what got me into the idea of if we bought a van, then maybe, you know, we would film as well. Yes. Yeah. But sadly, they don't, they don't make yeah. them anymore. But check out their channel if you haven't seen them. So that leads on to the next question about what makes you decide, what made you decide to start the channel? <clears throat> I just wanted to see if I could run a channel, really. Mm. Um, I've been making films for a long time. I've been in various Facebook groups and things like that. And people have said, oh, your films are good, but I'd never put it to the test, had we? Mm, no. So Just that, tried it, didn't know if it. we'd get any views. But no. Or what would happen? And, and luckily some people seem to watch them. doing quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel under pressure to get new content <clears throat> published? Um, not now. When we started, after maybe after the first six months, uh, there was quite a bit of pressure in running the channel. Mm. 
but I'd say that was all down to getting sucked into the YouTube um, algorithm, algorithm yeah. and machinery. Mm. Um, I, I, if uh, if you don't have to make a living out of YouTube, then I wouldn't even worry about the algorithm, mm. and I would avoid watching too many of the channels that advise you on how to do your channel mm. because I fell into that trap and I started altering the way I made my videos and they weren't my videos anymore no, and um, you know people said in the comments mm, what's you've changed. changed you've yeah. changed mm. I knew I'd changed because I was trying things they were saying that you should do mm. um, so I, I, I went back to normal if you can make the videos you want to make not you know, audiences will come and go. And we come and go from channels yeah, we've watched, yeah, haven't we? Yeah. There'll be a, there'll, there'll come a time. I, I, I've got no expectation that people will stay with us forever. I know audiences will come and go because that's exactly what I do uh, when I'm watching. Um, so make the videos you want to make and then the, the pressure won't be there. I would say if you can... Make one video a week. Um, don't leave big gaps. If you want your channel to grow, make one a, one a week. If you want to go quicker, make two a week. But that's a that's quite a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, can be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, any advice for someone looking into drones and drone photography for the first time? Yeah, um, I've got advice. Don't buy a drone unless you're serious about having one. You know, if you are going to buy a drone, buy a real drone. Don't buy a toy. Don't think you have to buy a toy before you get your real drone. The only drone I would recommend you get at the moment is either the DJI Mini 2 and they're bringing out the DJI Mini 3. Um, they're both excellent quality drones, easy to fly. Um, and they're the, um, they're, they only weigh 249 grams so that you can fly them almost anywhere. When you get it, spend a couple of days just flying it, learning to control it. You know, flying it around in circles, flying it around in squares, flying it pointing towards you, pointing away. You've got to get the stick experience. Um, and then when you fly it to film something, you can just focus on filming and getting the right shots. And plan what you want to film before you take off. Have, yeah. Have an idea. Yeah. Just... The, the batteries on them will last about 20 minutes. Uh, a lot of people zoom up into the air and they haven't thought about what it is they're trying to capture. So plan your flight. Fly straight and level. Uh, try to avoid twitching to the left or to the right because that will disturb the viewer when they're looking at your footage. Um, practice framing the shot um, use the rule of thirds if you don't know what the rule of thirds is look it up uh, that'll improve your shots and remember to start the camera yeah press record press record <laughs> otherwise you'll... you'll do what you've used to do yeah sometimes <laughs> spend some time learning how to control that drone when mm. things are going wrong mm. so all i mean by that is fly it out somewhere and simulate an emergency. Mm. Oh my God, I've got to get it back mm. and get it back to you and land it as quickly as you can mm. because things will go wrong flying a drone and it can be a stressful experience, but great fun and great for your videos. Yeah, make some good movies. Yeah. Mm. What is your favourite meal you make in the van? Well, one of our favourite comfort foods is corned beef hash which we always come back to good if you've had a hard day yeah, yeah. real comfort food and so easy to make uh, so we always yeah. try and carry the ingredients for that chicken in white wine uh, just a can of that oh, was that, it Sainsbury's chicken in yeah, white wine Tesco do it is it white well. wine or just a creamy no, just sauce just the creamy white sauce creamy white chicken sauce, in white sauce on a simple bed of rice yeah. Absolutely delicious. Just add a tin of Seconds sweet corn to make. Like that. Yeah, add yeah. a tin of sweet corn. Love that. But really tasty. Yeah. Yeah. I um, like the filled pasta you get, which you can just cook in a 
ready-made pasta sauce. Yeah. That's a really quick, easy meal. Spaghetti. I love spaghetti. Mm. Uh, you can knock up a spaghetti bolognese with a tin of, mi- a tin of tin mince, in. cooked yeah. mince. Yeah. And literally, in as long as it takes to do your spaghetti, spaghetti. you can have that ready. Um, as you might gather, we like something that's quick, quick. and tasty yeah. and doesn't need too much clearing up. Preferably something you can cook in one pan. Yeah. It's less to wash up. Yeah. Is that it? Which mm-hmm. leads on to the next question. What is the worst part of cooking in the van? So... The worst part is probably having, when the roof's down, having to prepare stuff hunched up, which can be a bit awkward. Yeah. So I find it hard to cook something on the stove while I'm sitting down. Mm. You don't find that so much of a problem. No, I don't find any problem in that. And the lack of preparation space. That's a big problem. We could overcome that if we Mm. carried our table with us. Yeah, yeah. But I prefer to have the table when it's... It put away at the back in the back of the van mm. cuts out some of some the space. storage space yeah. and we need every scrap of space we can have but we're getting used to um, using the trays now and having yeah. a chopping board on your lap and yeah chopping up which is quite is fine and um just to be aware you've not got the space so you have to clear up as you go along and yeah we never leave washing up in the sink, do we? And never leave the washing up. No, no. we would never no. do that. Mm. Everything has to be put away. and Before you go to bed, it's yeah. got to be done. Yeah. And that's a good thing to do anyway. Yeah, good practice. Yeah, good practice, yeah. Is that it? I think that concludes it. Yeah. Okay, thanks very so, much for watching. Thanks for sending in your questions. Yeah, and we'll do another Q&A in a few months' time. So thank you. Bye.